21 minutes to the top of the hour, 8 a.m. Friday's edition of Morning at NTV is about arts and culture. My name is Priscilla Regina Naloga. Now, this morning in our Kickstarter, we're going to be looking at a film about Mwenge Gwebigere. Now, many of you have experienced it from your childhood, I know, uh, in your many customs and cultures, especially in the Vaganda and also West Nile. Uh, this banana loco brew that is made by feet. Uh, well, today, a wonderful young man decided, why don't we put this into a film and share this wonderful experience that Uganda enjoys with the rest of the world, but also show its side effects. And so he came up with a movie title called The Footwine, and here is the preview of Footwine. So we have the millet and sorghum and foot wine from Uganda. We also sell the burukutu wine from Nigeria, but it's out of stock. I was born and raised in the bar. And alcohol was the family's source of livelihood. I've always cherished your alcohol to that of the neighbors because it's kind-hearted and sickly sweet. Drinks have drained our wallets. So, uh, I'm not complaining. I had come to say hello to the famous wine girl that champions the sale of these drinks that have destroyed our marriages. He's dead. He's dead. Your client is okay, dead. Calm down. We've got a little emergency in here that requires everyone to leave. My husband has been shot dead in a local band. I need your help immediately. <laughs> you have killed the father of my children. I'm not the one who killed your Then who did? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You're going to pay a huge price for his death. And this bar is going underground with him. I'm officially starting an investigation into the death of Mr. Kasozi that was murdered on the 14th of June in this bar. Gere foot wine. I like the song. It kind of catches up on you. So we're talking about film on banana wine flirting with nostalgia. And here to have this conversation with us is the producer of this film, Maynard Mulindua. Good morning to you, Maynard Mulindua. Good morning, Priscilla. How uh, are you? I'm alive and well. Oh, definitely, you are alive and well. And you're bringing life to film in Uganda. So tell us about the movie Foot Wine. What was the inspiration out of all the interesting things that happen in this country? I like out of all the interesting things that happened. I thought I could move with my beautiful throat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's actually called a calabash. And, uh, I just felt like um, so many stories have been ignored, you know, in Uganda or even in Africa. And uh, when I came across this little item here, it's actually a fruit that grows somewhere in Uganda. And uh, eventually it's harvested and it gets to be dried. Or, yeah, it gets to be dried to become this little utensil that you see here. And I met some guy back then who told me that these little things used to be used for cups. Like back then, in our forefather times, that they used to use them for drinking and all, and I was amused, you know. And today they are used for like the Mwengevi Gere to put in their alcohol. And they also used to, like on cultural events, you know. So because of this beautiful piece of art, I was inspired by the beauty in this by the diversity in Africa and uh, our rich cultural identity to get to, you know, choose to write a story about this beautiful subject. Yeah, the foot wine. Okay, all right. And so what is the kind of research that it, you had to put in to actually, first of all, understand uh, foot wine 
it, how it's done here locally, how people appreciate it, but also the things that come with it in terms of customs, cultures, traditions. Mm. What, what, one of my highlights, uh, first of all, I was very intrigued with the process, you know, because when you look at my bio, it says a sweet African drink. Uh, made from bananas. When I was in Masaka, when I went to shoot the intro part, I used to tell the guys, Mumpama toke, Mumpama toke, and they'll be like, no, it's called Embide. So they make mm -hmm. the fruit out of some type of bananas called Embide, mm -hmm. you know. And then I was amused by the whole process of using human feet to just get to stamp. They get the bananas, put them in a wooden canoe, and then they just get to do their whole marching. And I was, I was like, okay, the world has all kinds of wines and vodkas and whiskeys, but then when you come down to Africa, Uganda, our unique process of doing this drink has to be through the legs. So I was very amused by that. But in this film, it gets to actually override the will of men, and it gets to deceitfully, craftfully get to deliver death to its more loyal customers. So for me, it was, more, it was more than just getting to do a story about Mwengevi Gede. I tried to also see how I can create a world around it, design a beautiful bar, you know, get a bartender in there, get all these drunkards, prostitutes, policemen, and then have, in, have them in there to now see how this drink can get to affect them. Okay, all yeah. right. Joining us for this conversation to dissect the film industry is Andrew Kagwa, who's a journalist here at Daily Monitor. Andrew Kagwa, you have watched the trailer. It's yeah. a very peculiar, first of all, the picture alone is captivating. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's a standard. Uh, the mm -hmm. shots I have seen in there are kind of shots that show you that people put some effort into the film that is yet to come out. So in your response to the trailer, what, what is that feeling that you get out of the trailer? And also, Mwengevi Gere sincerely. You're not making me critique the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> I am. <laughs> uh, okay, one of the things I think, I, one of the very first things I, I saw, the very first time I looked at the teaser then, uh, was the fact that um, it's colorful. Uh, well, I have my reservations towards colorful, <laughs> uh, but uh, it's a very, it's a very clean trailer, and it's even a very clean bar, which I also have reservations about. Uh, I mean, no bias. Okay, what, 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 uh, maybe <coughs> at times I would want to know why the story is happening before I make a conclusion mm -hmm. of, on how clean or how tidy the bay is. Anyway, I think my problem was the fact that it was many of the things were too new and uh, it was too too neat. Like at least a bar, by the time it has operated that much, things will not be very, very tidy. But, but I still like the picture and I still like the effort because I can see there was some effort when it came to the production design mm -hmm. and they tried to use a lot of practical lighting when they were setting up their lights. And I hope that's not confusing uh, viewers. <laughs> but <laughs> Those that understand the art that goes into <laughs> film definitely understand what you're talking about. So Andrew, paint us for us a picture. You know, the film industry, I believe, has grown uh, leaps mm -hmm. and bounds in Uganda. Mm -hmm. And where we stand today, giving room to such Ugandans like mm -hmm. uh, Maine and Mulindwa here to produce a film. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's talk about how that movie industry has moved and where it's going with such. Uh, one... I think it's still a process. It's still a process. And why we, we are always in that process, it comes back to the fact that uh, we are regulated by people that are yet to fully understand the industry. Uh, that's the, the likes of UCC. Uh, they are yet to fully understand the industry and its potential. But yeah, where we are right now, people are very experimental. Uh, I remember in 20. 2015 was the very first time I did an international festival. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, we, we had one film screening at uh, Durban. That was Boda Boda Thieves. And when I came back, I, I tried to talk to the producers, like which cameras they use and everything. Uh, that's, that's the very first time I noticed that we had many of the equipment we needed oh, yes, for, we for many of the films we want to do. Because, mm. I mean, we're not going to try to produce an Avengers film now. But at that time, even now, many of the films we are trying to tell, we have the equipment to tell them the right way. So I remember I was talking to someone and I was like, I do not really think we have a lot of excuses right now when, we, when it comes to 
the quality of films you're telling. Mm -hmm. Like we have the cameras and we have the people that know how to use them. So it's on us to actually write the stories that the public can enjoy. So we've been improving the way we are doing things behind the camera, the way we are recording sound, the way we are um, editing, mm -hmm. the way we are doing our set design. We've been improving in all these sections. Unfortunately, we've not improved a lot when it comes to storytelling. And um, at the moment, it's still something we inherited. Like many of our problems, we actually inherited from one, the people that made films in in the late 90s inherited their problems from Nigerians because they watched a lot of Nigerian, Nigerian films movies, yeah. and they were like oh we can do that you remember Nigerians were, mm -hmm. were overacting uh, like the way those people got angry like they literally wanted the world to know they were angry like yeah, but I mean Nigerians by <laughs> by character that's, that's who they are yeah but yeah, but that, that, that they, 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 <laughs> they, there was a, some bit of overacting in the way they, exaggeration yeah. in the way they were doing it and then there came the thing of their set designs like their poor people couldn't really afford even a chair mm -hmm. and their rich people were too rich like stupidly rich and so we copied and pasted we copied and pasted because of consumption yes okay and then we are still suffering with some of the problems we copied from nigerians and then the people that came into the into film first in uganda were from theater mm -hmm. so they came with some practices that work well on theater but not well on screen but not well on screen and uh, those people are still making films today and those people are inspiring many young filmmakers. So we continue with the eras. So we continue films. with the eras. <laughs> so okay, so we'll come back <laughs> and find out exactly how do we remedy those eras that you were talking about. But uh, Maynard, uh, Andrew here has talked about set designs. He has talked about editing. He's talked about the camera work. Uh, when you were coming up with this project, what did you intend to do differently in those three areas? Um, <clears throat> I'll start with his point on the production design. I've had some good comments also from another filmmaker who said the production design is things look quite new and decent and all and I was like but people need to first learn to appreciate the progress like first look at what someone has designed how far they've come they've created from nothing to something and then you can first appreciate that because that was very authentic production design when I designed the bar I designed the bar for like a month before the actors came in for rehearsals. So you designed it yourself? Yeah. You so came up with the concept? I came up, I had the vision and yeah. I thought like it was not the time to quickly rush into hiring production designers because I knew what I wanted and I felt I had to do it myself. So I had to run down to a window, buy the props, come, design, experiment, take down things, bring them up, you know. Wow. And it can be overwhelming when you're a director at the same time. Mm -hmm. So when the actors came on set, they were like, we didn't know this bar existed. <laughs> You know, <laughs> and for an me, that was a, a big win. Bar. Yes, it was a big <laughs> win in regards to the authenticity of film because okay. mm -hmm. when it comes to good films, one of the things that makes a good film is the authenticity. How true are you to life? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so I like his comment and whoever else will comment on that part, but I want to urge them to first appreciate the work, the creativity that went into building that beautiful set. Okay. Because it's not very common, you All know? Right. Yeah. Then yeah but, you uh, but also, again, just, just to uh, critique that part, yeah. when you look at the characters in your trailer, yeah. they are also somehow sort of well-to-do characters. Mm. They're, they're not poor people that you should be expecting some uh, rowdy, rubbish kind of, you know, poor setting. So mm. I think it also speaks into uh, the kind of of the status of the people, the characters that you present in the film. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, usually when you begin, uh, don't forget it's my first time. It's your first <laughs> film, right? <laughs> usually when you begin, uh, I had so much on my mind. I am doing the cinematography, I am doing the production design, I am guiding on lighting, I am. I have written the story, I am producing. Some things can go out of hand, really. There mm -hmm. has to be, you, you have to cut some slack for a first timer who mm -hmm. has never done a film before. Mm -hmm. And you're coming out on the stage to produce what I produce. So I believe there's a lot to appreciate more than to critique. You know, and I believe if the industry can start to be that positive when they're looking at movies, then it'll help the industry and filmmakers get better. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then in regards to story, 
for me as a filmmaker, I've been, I've been in film for over 10 years. This was my first year to come in the film, but mm. I got my vision 10 years ago. And I've been studying film to the detail a lot. I learned mostly from the golden age of Hollywood, the black yeah. and white films, You're the being classics. You've been following a lot of James Cameron, a lot. Steven, the Steven Spielberg. Spielberg. Mm -hmm. My role models So you are don't understand when Andrew says uh, following the Nigerian word. Because for me, I've never yeah. watched Nigerian movies for learning. Okay. Yeah, I don't even have a role model in Africa. No offense, we just have different parts in life, you know. Mm -hmm. Me and my role models are men like John Ford, a man of 1930. Billy Wilder, who did Some Like It Hot, The Apartment. Mm -hmm. uh, Annie Hall, who did uh, The Wooden Allen Guy, you know, those old, old girl, Francis Coppola, you know, the mm -hmm. Alfred Hitchcocks. Those are my role models. So for me, the thing I learned back then that makes a good film is story. And for me, in my, in my opinion, I feel what we lack and what we are still lacking. We've grown, like you said, in all these other departments of production, sound, quality. We have the Reds and the Aries right now. We have the money that can afford to hire any actor we want. But we are still lacking in the screenplay. And I believe it is good screenplays that will eventually sell us out there. Mm -hmm. When you look at Africans right now, when you look, they're, they're doing well, you know, in the global market. When you look at the diggers, my digger's wife, Somalia. Grave digger's mm -hmm. wife. Grave digger's wife. Mm -hmm. Then uh, there is one, the, the boy who harnessed the wind, mm -hmm. Malawi. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, then the one of his sort of barrier, it's a resurrection, South yeah. Africa. All these guys are really going, like they're really going African. They're going bold and authentic. And they're trying to push their game. You're saying they're trying to push the envelope. And I see one of the directors really pissed at the Oscars because when we get into the Oscars as Africans, we stop at the selection stage. We've mm -hmm. never, it's only, I think, a lady from Tunisia. Never progress to nomination or even winning mm. i think the last time an african won the international category was i think tossy yeah in 2002 so th there the, is a the, gap the last nominee might have been um oh god there's some a movie, movie from, from, some, from somalia i sold my skin something like that some tunisian lady who got a nomination mm -hmm. so there is a gap between where we are and we've grown the industry is doing so well you know but there's a gap between where we are and where the real standard of Hollywood of doing good films is. And for me, I feel that gap yeah. is storytelling. So um, I'll ask Andrew here, why do they feel pressured that they must meet the standard of Hollywood? Why can't Africa create its own standard of film? Uh, Before, just a second. Before, <laughs> it's not pressure. Yeah. I think it's just it's good to have standards you, you challenge yourself towards because what I'm talking about by a standard is not go and copy the Western stories and do the avatars and the Titanics. No, I'm saying learn to write good dialogue, learn to compose a good plot. That's what I mean by standard because when you do so, then you'll be doing good stories that can reward the audience. Okay, all right. Yeah. So Andrew, again, uh, okay. why do they feel the need to you know, press up into Hollywood and yet they, there's an opportunity to create our own you know, thing? Nigerians have done it. Indians have done it and the world is consuming it. Uh, one thing you need to appreciate is a, is the fact that uh, this is not a closed market. Mm -hmm. You see, what we have with music is uh, we have very many artists. Music is quite easier to produce and it's easier to access compared to a film. Now, our audiences have a lot of access to Hollywood content. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're dealing with such an audience, you, you, it gets to your mind that you're not competing with a Ugandan filmmaker or a Kenyan filmmaker. You're actually competing with an American content creator because people have access to their film the same way. And actually, they have access, more access to that film more than they have to your film. So the pressure is actually there. The pressure is true. Yesterday I was at the cinema and um, they, they were doing trailers, you know, before film starts. And uh, they play film, a, a, a trailer for a Ugandan film that's coming soon. Mm -hmm. it, it was the first time I was seeing the trailer. They had played that trailer, I think, after they had played Jurassic Park. <laughs> and so they yes. played this Ugandan trailer. And then the next trailer that came on was Top Gun. Uh, I think Avatar came mm -hmm. in. And, and trust me, it like I, I buried yeah. my head and I was thinking I don't think anyone still remembers the Ugandan <laughs> trailer that played in between. But this Ugandan film is coming to that same space yeah. mm -hmm. to be seen by this same public. Mm -hmm. So the the pressure to get to that standard is real because you're you're playing with them, you're fighting for the same space, you're fighting for the same audience. Okay. 
All right. Uh, Made it. you did talk about writing, uh, you know, a good script, very, very paramount, something that is yet to be groomed and grown here uh, on the Ugandan market. So what was that <coughs> process that you went through to actually come up with the nature script that you use on the film? My goodness, um, I must say writing a good screenplay is a big challenge. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been learning how to write a good screenplay for 10 years. When I got onto the foot wine, I think I changed my plot like 18 times because uh, during that time, I think The Parasite had come out, Knives mm -hmm. Out, such films like mm -hmm. that. So I was trying to gauge myself according to these men's plots, not to copy their Western ideas, but I was trying to look at what they've done and try to replicate the same thing. And every time I'd look at the movie and come back to my screen, I'd be like, this yeah. is... Mm -mm 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 -mm. <laughs> then I would change the whole plot. And I kept on changing. And you know, with a good screenplay, there are so many areas you're looking at. The plot, the grip, the cliffhanger itself. You're looking at good dialogue, the setup, the characters. So it was overwhelming for a first time. And when the film ended, surprisingly, it's been making rounds and moving around. But I was critiquing myself already. I was watching the film like a million times and going like, no. When am I writing the next film? Yeah. You know, so I can improve. <laughs> to correct all these things. Yeah, yes. because there's always <laughs> something new you're learning every single day. So for me, uh, my biggest win in the foot wine was the lessons I learned in the process. You know, when you're arranging a story on paper, it's different when you're now cutting the film. Yeah. You're like, now I feel like the, the flow is lacking here, or something is lacking here. So. F and, and you so can only learn does it. not stop when you know when uh, producing starts. Yes. It's a continuous process even through the production. Yeah. Okay. So I, I when after editing, I was like, I could only see this in the editing, not at the stage of writing. And you're like, okay, now I can only correct this on the next movie because this one is already like past the stage mm -hmm. of writing, and just have to now produce it, release it, and. And so, so just <laughs> for people to understand, how long did that writing take you? Now, one of, and I'm going to share something quite interesting. Uh, in this journey of my 10 years of study, and please, I, I mentioned 10 years, but it's not like I've been in school. It was self-taught entirely at home. For me, I used to just use Wikipedia, Google, every material I could get, and I would use that to learn. And one of the things that I struggled with a lot was how long does it take to write a good screenplay? Because on Google, when you go there, you'll find the basic time frame of three months. Three months, three months, four months, five months. When I began to write this story, Three months elapsed and I was not done. And I was like, am I procrastinating? Is there a problem with me? And I'm like, okay, four months I'll be done. I failed finishing four months. And then I went back until I did a lot more research. I found some lady someday on YouTube saying, to write a professional, mark the word professional feature film, like a screenplay, she was like, you need around one year to three, depending on the story you're writing. That blew me away. I was humbled. It was like it opened my eyes <laughs> to appreciate my journey and realize, okay, Maynard, it won't take you two months to write a good detailed screenplay. You're going to need around eight to one year to finish, eight months to 12 to finish a screenplay. So I wrote the foot wine for nine months. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah, <nine months. laughs> now that's investment into yeah. it. Uh, I, I think the, uh, yes, Maynard. Yeah, and, and, and the challenge with that is that sometimes the art is hidden. Someone may come and watch your film and wait to see maybe the usual dramatics of people screaming, shouting, crying. My film is very silent. It's a lot about the art. When you listen to my dialogue, it's very composed and very poetic, you know? When you look at, at my riddle, because I call it a riddle, the whole twist of the plot, it has a lot of thought given to it. But okay. I was worried, I was like, okay, now I've designed all these things, but will people notice them? Because uh, How long is the movie? It's one hour and 40. One hour and 40. Wow, <laughs> standard. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. right. Um, uh, I know there's, uh, people are always asking themselves the whole question of, in Uganda, we have the challenge of the director is the producer, is the screen uh, play writer, he's the production, <laughs> he's the set designer, <laughs> and it's always a one man show. So when you're seeing, you know, the, the, <laughs> the credits, mm. it is Maynard Mulindwa, Mulindwa Maynard, Mulindwa Maynard, Mulindwa Maynard, Andrew Kagwa, Mulindwa Maynard, you <laughs> nice, get, you nice. know. So how do we deal with that challenge? Because the reality is that um, we have seen it again, Hollywood, mm -hmm. if that it should be the standard. Mm -hmm. A film is made by hundreds of people mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. of uh, specialization in yes, skill set to get yeah. out the best in mm -hmm. what you're trying to communicate. Mm -hmm. So from your critic end of view, mm. Uganda, that is one of all its problems in the film industry. What are the solutions, Andrew? Uh, do we have to fix it? <laughs> okay, yeah. okay, you see, this is what I think. Uh, I do not work with people. Are you okay with it? Because first, asked first, if first listen to, to me. Okay. Uh, I, I do not work with people because I have to work with people. 
I work with people because they're going to bring something to the table. Uh, you see, at times, the people that are available are not going to do what you want, mm -hmm. but you can actually do that thing yourself. Like, I have a friend who is currently shooting a film in Nigeria. He went to Nigeria to, to shoot as, to work as a director on this film, and when he got there, he noticed the cinematographer wasn't giving him what he, want. he wants. So right now he's a director and a cinematographer of the film. And the way I know him is an amazing cinematographer. Mm. That's Lukman Ali. So you're not going to collaborate with people because you have to collaborate, because you need a lot of hands on this film. But if you can actually pull this work off by yourself, the departments you really understand well. My problem would be someone trying to do these things and they can't actually do them. You see, the thing about film is that uh, it's a team kind of work, but besides being a team kind of work, that team is supposed to think together. And the reason that that team is supposed to think together is the reason why you would find uh, uh, the likes of, uh, just, I've forgotten the director's name, but he's American, why they usually end up doing much of the work themselves. Because uh, I'm not going to ask a cinematographer to give me a certain shot and he doesn't know that shot. Well, the director is the overall overseer of the film, so mm -hmm. obviously the, a wide expansive knowledge of just about every element that is mm -hmm. brought into a film, he mm -hmm. must be knowledgeable about. And if he can't do something about it to get the direction of film he is wanting, that's okay. Now that's different from the one main at Murindwa, Shoda here, this is director, <laughs> screenwriter, uh, no. acting selector. Uh, you know, here is a yes. reality. So yes. uh, what is that for you? Like? Here is a reality. You come into the industry, it's your first time to do a movie. And this industry, I have, I've had very many stories about it, you know. One of the things you won't find in the creatives here is that commitment, that devotion, that passion to invest in a project that is not theirs, you know. If you don't come out and fight on your own, man, and hustle, nobody's going to come out and help you because I was the executive producer. Now I'm using my hard earned money to now solicit a team. I had a great filmmaker I brought on board, Sam, Sam Chizito. He helped me with the casting. He's very talented. This guy was was like, who do you want? He, I sent a screenshot, he's like, okay, let me call him. Who do you want? So that he really helped me in the area of casting and, and assembling a great army of talent in that area. But in the rest of the departments, I, you know, you also have to look at your money. You have a good story here, but then you don't have all the money to begin hiring a cinematographer when I've done camera for 10 years. Then, thank God for the story, I wrote it. Then also the directing, you have to pay around, because uh, it's like 50,000 to 100 a day. I didn't have like a million shillings for every department. Now, going to post-production, I'm an editor, you know, I've been doing editing as well. I'm like, oh, so now wait, I stopped editing my film because I have to specialize and give it to someone else and give them one M. I didn't have the one M. So I'm doing the editing, I'm doing the color grading, not because we want, you know, one of the things I believe in as a filmmaker is specialization. I followed Steven Spielberg for a long time. And you look at Steven Spielberg's team, he has almost the same, same cinematographer that has done like five of his films. Yeah. John Williams, who has done his music, has been with him for over 20 years. Yes. Now, it's very good to specialize and it has very many advantages to it. And one thing I would advise filmmakers, and here they do it a lot, you know, I would ask everyone and they will tell me, e here, uh, if you're a director, you can hold the camera and go and shoot. Now, I was on my set, and my directing style was a bit different. I was applying something called stage business, where you engage the actor and keep them busy while they're acting. It's more something like, something to do with the art. Now, that was very engaging. My dialogue was very rich, so we did rehearsals for like two weeks. So we had to repeat texts. We'd do like 10 to 12 texts. And actors, every time or I did just like one scene. One scene. Every time I did like two, three texts, they would be shocked. They would be like, Director, are you OK? They would joke about it. But the reason I would repeat was to try and get the perfection I wanted. Yeah. In the process, I am on camera, remember. My mind as well with the kind as, as using one camera, a big camera, you know, but with one camera you're trying to also shoot while editing. You are aware of jump cuts, you are aware of the mistakes that can happen with the one camera. So my mind is engaged in directing the actors, you have to stay in character every time we cut, there's continuity of the props going on, look at that overwhelming world. That's what and then saying. I'm in the frame looking at the shot to make sure it's stable, light is yeah. good, no grain, okay, we are looking good. Now in the process, at some point, one, you would leak somewhere. You'd either forget to direct and focus on the picture, mm -hmm. 
or focus on the directing okay. and something would go off with the and picture. That's exactly uh, so what it is not to healthy with. to multitask. No but we do it. Hair. But we do uh, it yeah. because of the realities of where we are as an industry. And let let, let me tell you one, one of the things that happened. Okay. Uh, I, I've been able to, I've been lucky enough to be on sets that are rich with, uh, mm. with talent. And uh, one thing I noticed that's very different between other markets and Uganda mm -hmm. is that uh, from the editor to, okay, not from the editor, but from the guy on the camera, the director to the guy that's recording sound, in other places, most of these are creatives. Mm -hmm. And uh, all these people actually read the script. In Uganda, we have cinematographers that will not read your script. OK. So if your cinematographer did not read the script, if the editor did not read the script, like in its entirety, because they have to read it, and at times, rewrite it in their own way, basing on the shots they would want to take, mm -hmm. which you end up discussing. And even the editor will read it and, OK, so will they pan like this? And so most of the times when people do not read the script, they will not give you what you want. And that's why you find people At opting right. to work for themselves okay. like they do everything themselves. All right, uh, Maynard Mulindwa, the Footwine film, when is it coming out where you're starring <coughs> cast and, uh, you know, what's the storyline in brief? Oh, of the Footwine? Yeah. Uh, the Footwine, in brief, is a story about our local brews. I just get to unmask the local brews and show they are both the good side and the bad side. So it's a sweet African drink in there made from, you know, Mbide. Uh, using human feet that gets to override the will of men and then eventually gets to bring death amidst. But also on the other side, it's a story about a local bar and a very young, vibrant young lady that owns this local bar. I had to use a young girl and then I gave a very rich history. I made sure she was born and raised in the bar mm -hmm. to alcoholic parents. Mm -hmm. And then in there, she's just doing bar life, you know, welcoming policemen, drunkards, officers, and then getting to just juggle them, eh? Because so many issues happen in there. Mm -hmm. So she gets to just know how to work around them and also I, I made sure I designed a very good world for her you know one one of the quotes I love about film is that it was said back then by one of my role models that film is more than flashing images it is an art form that grows larger than life okay this so could have been what are the names of your cast uh, the names of my cast, yeah. uh, star my star cast. One is the officer himself, because I have a policeman in there. The other is Tina, she's a prostitute. Then I have uh, the bartender herself. Okay. Yeah, then the Mrs. Kasozi. The film will be out next month. Okay. Uh, right now, I will have screenings going on. I want to use mostly the screenings, because I have a screening in Texas. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the African Film Festival, I got an, uh, a selection there. Then I got another selection in California with Piton International Film Festival. So I'll be putting up the dates for people to go and check out the movie on those platforms. Mm -hmm. But also UFF will be coming out soon, the nominations, and I believe they also screen our films. So I'll be urging my fans to go and check out the movies from oh, there. Sorry. All right, and yeah. Andrew Kago will be criticizing uh, that movie <laughs> when it finally comes out. Well, uh, you can definitely look out for it. I think it will add a lot of flair to the movies that we have been seeing in most recent time, uh, times. Yellow Jumper made a lot of rounds, and so we expect that uh, a lot of African heritage <coughs> is going to be told to win in the future appreciation for our arts and culture here in Uganda and share it with the rest of the world. Uh, arts and culture is beautiful, and film is just a tool for us to express the things that are around us and tell them to the rest of the world. So well done to you, Maynard Bulindwa and you. Andrew Kagwa. Let's continue pushing the button so that this mm -hmm. industry is a better industry and someday get nominations into the Grammys and so on and so forth. Well, our Kickstarter ends right here. We do take note of men's gathering around the corner. Do you stay with us?